it's a real thrill to be talking to people in part I know and to meet people I don't know. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and particularly, I wanted to talk about this book in a certain way that you can't always talk about it in every venue, so I appreciate the intimacy of this. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about what I think the um, particular accomplishments of the book are, and really then to read some, because I'd like you to get a feel for it if I try to achieve something that I think hasn't been done before in terms of between the covers of one book. And then really have a discussion with you about some of my goals in writing this book and what you think about those as goals. Um, so I would start by pointing out to you that the book is um, referred to by me and Nebraska agreed to go along with it as a paramemoir. And that's a word that I coined myself for a very specific reason. Um, memoir is a very beloved genre in American publishing right now, and I enjoy reading memoirs. Um, defined by Webster's as a narrative of personal experience. Um, and I had been reading myself quite a, a few memoirs by, written by a very specific group of people, and that is um, children of Holocaust survivors. Uh, one of my areas of expertise mm -hmm. is the Holocaust, and um, an interesting development in the last 10 to 15 years has been the generation of children of survivors writing about the experience of growing up as children of survivors. And for professional reasons, I was reading this book, but I found myself, for partly professional and partly very private reasons, feeling incredibly uncomfortable with these texts. They were both familiar to me, but I am very unfamiliar in a specific way I'd like to share with you. And that was that they, children seemed to know an enormous amount about what had happened to their parents. And um, I thought to myself, how can they know so much? Mm -hmm. So there was this one question, how, how do they know uh, about these things that happened before their birth? And then the other uh, issue that was puzzling for me was the issue of how the books themselves could be so coherent. They seemed to create a chronology and a narrative about the parents and even about their own childhoods that seemed very coherent to me, and that coherency was, published, uh, was puzzling to me as well. So I got ready to write a book, as we academics often do, of analyzing these memoirs of children of survivors when I thought to myself, well, I have a certain relationship to the Second World War as well, and maybe I should challenge myself to write about that before to achieve insight into what these other writers have gone through. Um, and I launched what I thought would be a fairly small project that might inform, enhance, that other project, and when I sat down finally to write what I thought would be an appendix to that other book, it just started flowing out of me in this very, um, very um, powerful way. And for the first, and I'm suspecting the only time in my life, I wrote about 300 pages in seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So that itself was a moving experience that made me wonder uh, what was going on. And the result um, was, in fact, uh, an earlier version of, of this book you see here today. Um, so I decided, come on in. Hi, Meredith. It's Hi. a pleasure to see you. Come. Um, so I uh, decided to call this book a paramemoir because I wanted to distinguish it from those memoirs I've been reading. Um, para in Greek uh, means beyond, instead of, as a substitute for. And so I thought that this had a relationship to memoir, and some parts of it read like memoir, but it's also something much more different from that. Um, so the parts of this book that basically um, I worked with and felt I needed to get out there are a section explaining the process I went through in terms of understanding what had happened to my father and his family during the Second World War and the occupation of Greece. And then a section in which I have um, gathered family stories in a very particular way. First of all, they are the stories of two different generations. So they're the stories of my father's generation. Um, his sister is still alive, and I was able to interview her and my father very extensively. My mother knew a lot about my father. Hi, are you comfortable there? Is that? Hi. Okay, great, welcome. Um, so my mother knew quite a lot about what had happened to my father from hearing stories at an earlier point in time. Um, and then I interviewed uh, people of my generation, 
Um, particularly, I'm one of six children. I'm, I'm happy to say my brother is here with me today, but there are another four of us. So I interviewed all my, and um, some first cousins, and first cousins also of my father's generation. So I had these two generations of a family asking them about the same series of events. And I created what I believe might be the first family memory scan. So what I did was, in a short period of time, I conducted these interviews, and then I organized them by particular narratives, so uh, kernels of stories, stories about why my grandmother went to Greece with these young children in the first place. The children were actually born in the United States. That's the cover you see. This is the passport they went to Greece on in 1937. Um, stories about a mysterious house, a house that somehow should have belonged to my grandparents and yet it didn't. Um, stories about my father in a private school, he was in there. Stories about starving. Um, stories about my dad working on a ship. Um, stories about how they finally got out of Greece. So I grouped it by topic and then different members of the family knew different things and what they thought they knew and how they narrated it was different. So I juxtaposed by topic, and you can see, in a sense, just the way you might get a, a brain scan, you can see what a family at a particular point in time thought about its past. And I think, at least to my knowledge, no one else has ever tried to do that. Um, the next sections of the book are something you might expect a little more from someone like me. I then apply my analytical skills that I've been acquiring over the years to those stories, and I analyze them by a number of different um, approaches that I have been working with over the years. One is the relationship of oral cultures to literate cultures. Greece is a very unusual case because, of course, it's been literate for millennia, and yet the culture of modern Greece is very influenced by oral culture. Um, uh, by it, it, theories of memory, um, how any of us might remember something and how our memories change with time. Um, by theories of trauma, this is another area of my specialization, so how these stories and why uh, we can detect um, occurrences of trauma in the people who are narrating the stories. Um, and then I get a little more speculative. I push those categories into new territory, and I'll be sharing some of that with you. Um, and then there's a last section that is also, um, to my knowledge, not been tried before, and this is where I take one of my own concepts that I developed from uh, psychotherapies for trauma victims that's referred to as co-witnessing. So really providing an interlocutor for someone who's been traumatized who can help that traumatized person reconstruct the story of what happened. So this is me then addressing my father, trying to be that listener that he never really had, that person who could help him understand the sequence of events that he actually went through as a relatively young child. Um, and I'm going to read you some of that, so hopefully you get a feel for it. So the book has these different sections that read quite differently. And that's another reason I had to call it a paramemoir as opposed to a memoir, because most memoirs have a fairly consistent tone that's used um, throughout, throughout the book, and this one does not. The book's quite new, so I I'm, I'm don't have much feedback yet about what people think. The people who have read the book um, seem to be quite enthusiastic, and I've been very pleased with the way in which they're responding to these, this experiment, really. Um, but I need more data about what people really think, so I, can't, I certainly can't present it to you as an unqualified success. We'll find out. It's just a little bit too new. So again, I'm thrilled to have this opportunity, and what I'd like to do is give you a flavor of some of the parts of that book. Does that seem okay? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, so the very first section, I am trying to recapture what I think I knew as a very, very young child. Um, I'm obviously not able to somehow um, project myself back 45 years, but I tried to do that and to think what I believe um, it felt like to know something about my dad. So the first part is called Stalked by Daddy's War earliest memories and how I came to face them. And you'll notice the title of the book and, and it appears in most of the chapters, this concept of daddy's war um, is precisely expressed that way because I was trying to recapture the perspective of a child as opposed to an adult looking at these events. So when I was very young, he was daddy, he was not John or 